what I'm saying? So we need to start with announcements. I can't even get behind the podium. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, uh, fellowship hour every Sabbath at 4 p.m. Um, Pacific time. Reach out to me if you'd like to join us live. Um, I know a couple of y'all asked me to remove the time, change the time. We're not changing it, at least not right now. So if you can make it, cool. If not, reach out to me. We could try to figure something else out or set up a different call or something like that. Or we could just speak one-on-one. -on -one. That's always available. I feel like nobody called me now, though. I don't get the random call. Like, I used to get, I used to, I feel like we get more views now and I used to get more random calls before. <coughs> Thing is weird. But, uh, either way, uh, let y'all be blessed and glorified and all the things that we do. Um, then also, what's the other one? Ain't it one more announcement? Oh, man. Mm, I feel I like it was something else. Oh, also, uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come in, uh, together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In Him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through works, not grace through works. Faith. Through faith, not through works, lest anyone should boast <coughs> and give him freely as a, as a uh, yeah. gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said... Peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Okay. Okay. Sound wise and video quality. Yep. Oh, all put right. Some, put some ice in it, nephew. Uh, <laughs> all righty. So last week we started to read a little bit of Micah. Uh, this week, we're going to kind of get back into the Kings and we're going to split off and jump back into Micah at some point. Um, and then we still got to we still got to read a lot more in Isaiah. Um, but let's let's get back into the Kings. We're going to learn about King Hezekiah. So quick recap on the Kings that we've covered so far. We looking at. Um, a number of Kings here. Let's see if we can do our laser pointer. So we're looking at a number of our Kings here. We know that. We went all the way to King Hoshea, and then the Assyrians came, took all of the northern kingdom in the captivity. So we had multiple prophets, Jonah, Amos, Hosea. We started Micah a little bit. We read a little bit of uh, Isaiah. And during that same time, we read about Uzziah. Remember, he was the one who ran up into the temple, tried to light the incense, got leprosy. You had his son, Jotham, that had to take over while he was still alive, which is a little different from a lot of the kings that we've been seeing. You have King Ahaz that came after him. Um, Ahaz is the one that kind of snitched out uh, snitched out the, the northern kingdom and got the Assyrians to come take him over. And then after Ahaz, Hezekiah comes into the play. So when Hezekiah comes in, he's coming into the thick of it, right? When he comes in, he's coming in right after and right while um the king of assyria is expressing their dominance over the land and we're gonna see that the king of assyria also tries to express dominance over judah right so we're gonna have to kind of kind of watch how this plays out and see how the king hezekiah handles it and see how he follows the guidance of the most high god it's important for us to remember that the most high god um the most high god spoke directly to uh ahaz from uh, hi, uh isaiah and remember he told ahaz he said listen ask me for a sign that i give you that everything gonna be all right and ahaz didn't trust him so we we, we know how that happens when when the most high god you know gives us instruction and gives us guidance and we don't trust in him with that guidance so now we're gonna kind of see how it plays out with our king hezekiah so this is second kings let's do second kings 18. Second Kings chapter 18, verse 1. 
Now it came to pass in the third year of Hosea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Mm -hmm. 25 years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. His mother's name also was Abai, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father did. He removed the high places and broke the images and cut down the groves and break in pieces in the brazen serpent that Moses had made. Mm -hmm. For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it, and he called it Nehushtan. <clears throat> he trusted in Yahuwah, God of Israel. He did what now? He trusted in Yahuwah, God of Israel. Right, so Yahuwah had his trust. Right, he believed a man. He was like, listen, if, if he says it's gonna go down that way, I believe it. Right, so Yahuwah had his trust. Then what? So that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. <clears throat> For he clave unto Yahuwah and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments, which Yahuwah commanded Moses. Mm -hmm. And Yahuwah was with him, and he prospered where, whithersoever he went forth. And he rebelled against the king of Assyria and served him not. He did what now? He rebelled against the king of Assyria and served him not. Why Why might he do that? Because he trusted you. All right. Grab uh, Isaiah chapter 10. It's Isaiah chapter 10 verse 1. It's Isaiah chapter 10 verse 1. Where is that son of yours? Man? Which one? The guy, I bet he forgot. What do you? What he's supposed to bring you water? Oh, you got the wrong one. You got to ask the hard for that. The hard wasn't available. Zakai, where you at? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, unto them that decree unrighteous decrees in that right grievousness which they have prescribed. Mm -hmm. To, to turn aside the needy from the judgment and to make and to take away the right from the poor of my people mm -hmm. that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless and what will you do in the day of visitation and in the desolation which shall come from far to whom will you flee for help and where will you leave your glory without me they shall bow down under the prisoners and they shall fall under the slain for all this his, hang, his anger is not turned away but his hand is stretched out still. What do you think his hand stretched out for? To give you a handshake? You think most high God trying to give you a hug? He said for all this stuff. He talking about us, by the way. He said for all this stuff, his anger is his anger is not turned away. And his arm is his hand is stretched out still. When, his, when the book say his hand is stretched out, I mean he's trying to get some butt. All right? Watch this. Keep going. O Assyrian, the rod of my anger and the staff in their hand is my indignation. He said, O Assyrian, the rod of my anger. He called Assyria the rod of his anger. Right now, the book tells us in another place in Proverbs, it tells us don't spare the rod or I'm paraphrasing, but it tells us not to spare the rod. He who spares the rod hates his son. It's talking about discipline in our children. So the rod was an instrument instrument that was used to discipline the children. And it's saying, don't spare it. So now he's saying Assyria is the rod of his anger. In other words, Assyria is his instrument to discipline his children. Right? Keep going. Watch this. I will send him against an hypocritical nation and against the people of my wrath will I give him a charge. To take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread down like the mire of the streets. Right? So he's telling them, he's like, listen, I'm going to give it to Assyria to go against a hypocritical nation. Right? To take all their stuff from them. And to tread down in their streets. To stomp all over them people. Right? Watch this. Keep going. Howbeit he meaneth not so, neither does his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and cut off nations. Right? Not a few. So remember, I always say a lot, oftentimes when we on the fellowship call or even even here, I always talk about how it's important to be able to look at things in two perspectives, right? You have God's perspective that we learn about from the book or that we might learn about if, if the Most High God bless us to be a prophet or something like that. We have the perspective that God gives us, right? Then you also have man's perspective. <coughs> the Most High God just gave us both. He said, listen. Assyria is the rod of my anger, right? I'm sending Assyria to punish my children, 
But then he comes back and follows up. He says, but it ain't in his mind to do that. It's not like it's not like the king of Assyria is walking out saying, hey, I'm doing the will of God. I'm punishing you guys because you guys have been unjust. Most like God never communicated that to him. Most like God didn't sit down with the king of Assyria and say, listen, this is what I need you to do. I need you to go over there and take over Israel uh, because they've been bad. That's not the conversation. Assyria, the king of Assyria woke up one day. Right. And he had it in his mind. Oh, I'm about to destroy and take over a whole bunch of nations. That's his mind. Nobody told him to do it. That's what he came up with his own mind. He said, I'm great enough to do this. The most high God is using his mindset. To kill two birds with one stone. Oh, well, OK, you're going to sin and I'm going to judge you. But since you're going to sin, why don't you go ahead and, you know, what I'm saying take care of my people, too. <sighs> right. Keep going. Watch this. For he said, are not my princes altogether kings? Right. This is man's perspective. So from king of Assyria's perspective, are, man, all my all my rulers, they kings in themselves. I'm a king of kings is what he's saying. Right. I'm running the show, but all the people under me, boy, they run their own empire. They run their own kingdoms, right? I'm a top dog. Keep going. <clears throat> is not Calno as Carchemish? Uh huh. Is not Hamath as Arpad? Is not Samaria as Damascus? As my hand has found the kingdoms of the idols, and whose graven images did excel them of Jerusalem and of Samaria. Shall I not, as I have done unto Samaria and her idols, do so to Jerusalem and her idols? Uh huh. Wherefore, it shall not come to pass that when the Lord has performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, I will, pun I will punish the fruit, the stout, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria. Look, this is what the yeah. Most High God said, right? So Most High God started off with, look, Assyria is my tool that I'm using to punish. I'm about to kick y'all butts with Assyria because y'all wicked and y'all hypocritical, right? Then he come back and he say, but the king of Assyria ain't thinking that. King of Assyria thinking... I'm the man. I'm running the show. I got this great empire. Right. But he said, but don't worry about it. Because after I get done punishing y'all and after everything's supposed to happen in Israel and in Judah, then I'm going to punish the king of Assyria. So watch how he describes the punishment that's going to end up with the king of Assyria. I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria in the glory of his high looks. For he said, by the strength of my hand have I done it, and by my wisdom, for I am prudent. And I have removed the bounds of the people, and have robbed their treasures, and I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. Right, so when he say, I've removed the bounds of the people, he's saying, I, 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 I changed their borders. Right, he said, look, look, I y'all used to live here, and this used to be y'all land. No, nah, I'm changing it. And ain't that what he did? Right, he took our people who lived in Samaria, who lived in the northern tribes. He took all them into the captivity, killed a whole bunch of folks. A lot of them ran, right? But the ones, he took them into a captivity, and then he moved them into a different land. <coughs> then he took Gentiles and moved the Gentiles into our land. Y'all remember we read that? Right? And then the Gentiles that was there started getting eat, ate, uh, uh, eaten up by the animals. And they were looking like, oh, well, it must be because the God of this land ain't pleased. So then he took one of our priests to send them back into the land to teach everybody how to serve God according to the northern tribe, which was already off to begin with. So they started to adopt our uh, our principles from the northern tribe that had already like a mixed, uh, perverted version of the way the Most High God wants us to serve. Him. Right. It's kind of like Christianity. I think of it like Christianity. Right. It's like, OK. It's like we supposed to be disciples and then you got a group of people that instead of being disciples is Christians. Right. Then in a the hope of being disciples, somebody teach them Christianity. Right. It's a watered down version, corrupted version of what the most high God asked for. So that's the state that things are in. But that happened because the king of Assyria changed their borders. Right. He changed the territory. He said, man, listen, instead of you, you know, so he changed their bounds is what the book say. Instead of you being here, you're going to be over here. You're bound by this area of land instead of being bound by this area of land. Right. Actually, no different from what we talked about in the last fellowship call. Right. When when we talked about uh, Israel and Palestine. Right. That's how that situation happened. Because you got all these people, you got you got all these Gentiles, 
you know what I'm saying, that, that, that's fighting over the land. But then you got the, Euro <clears throat> you got the Europeans that changed the borders. They said, okay, well, you know what? This land belongs to, to, to the Jewish people, and then this land belongs to the Palestinians. And they keep changing their borders, and what does that do? That causes conflict. That causes people to rebel. So now watch what happens here with the king of Assyria. And my hand hath found as a nest the riches of the people. And as one gathers eggs that are left, have I gathered all the earth. And there was none that moved the wing or opened the mouth or, pee or peeped. Mm -hmm. Shall the axe boast itself against him that hews with it therewith? Or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it? As if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up. Mm -hmm. Or as if the staff should lift up itself as if it were no wood. Therefore shall the Lord, the Lord of hosts, send among his fat ones leanness, and under his glory he shall kindle a burning like the fire, like the burning of a fire. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire, and his holy one for a, a flame. And it shall burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day, and shall consume the glory of his forest and of his fruitful, fruitful field, both soul and body, and they shall be as when a stand <coughs> standard bearer fainted. And the rest of the trees of his forest shall be few, that a child may write them. Right? So you look at it, and he's telling you, he's saying, this is the tool. I'm going to end up punishing the tool. Because have y'all ever heard of a tool that argue with the, the one who's when was the last time you seen the axe jump up and be like, yo, 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 don't swing me like that. Right? That's what he's saying. He's saying, it don't even make sense. What do you think this man going to be able to do with me? This is my tool. So he said, I'm going to punish him when I get done with it because I'm done with the tool. He, he served a purpose, <coughs> right? So now when you think about this, this is what Isaiah has been walking around prophesying about. When you think about that, then you got to put yourself in the mindset is if Hezekiah trusts the Most High God and he believes that Isaiah is speaking the word of the Most High God, well then, yeah, this is, this is why you will rebel against the king of Syria. Because you know what his end is. Right? You trust that in the end, most I got using them to punish me. I get it. I get it. Stuff is rough right now. I get it. But in the end, my trust is with the most I got, and I know what he's going to do to you eventually. Right? So now let's go back to 2 Kings. You just have to kind of put yourself in the mindset of Hezekiah. I trust God, and I believe that Isaiah is talking of God. So he's hearing this stuff. He hearing what Isaiah is saying. And once he hear, he like, oh, okay, that's how it play out. He the rod of your anger, but uh, but you're gonna punish him. Okay, and you're gonna make him burn up all in one day. Okay, cool. If that's the case, then you know what I'm saying? I ain't about to bow down to him. I'm gonna rebel against him. Watch this. And the Lord was with him, and he prospered what whithersoever he went. Verse seven. This is uh, 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 7. Watch the book say. And the Lord was with him, and he prospered wheresoever he went, wheresoever he went forth. And he rebelled against the king of Assyria and served him not. He smote the Philistines even unto Gaza and the borders thereof, from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hosea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria and besieged it. Watch this. Look, so besiege, whenever they say besiege, besiege, besiege is what they're doing to the uh, Palestinians right now, right? What the, what the Jewish people are doing to the Palestinians, besiege is when you trap somebody in, right? Anytime you trap somebody in and, and so what they're doing to the Palestinians, they trap them in, they're not letting, they turn, they shut off their power. They're not letting water, food get in. So it's like, whatever you got, that's what you got. Ain't nothing coming in and out because what you want to do is you want to, you want to, you want to take somebody to a position where they're going to surrender, right? So now you got to understand it. This is the book that we read. We besiege nations and nations have besieged us, right? So a lot of people that's looking at it like, oh my goodness, this is a humanitarian crisis. This is a war crime. This is a, okay, you can do all that. But at the same time, I know, I know us Hebrews, we don't like the Jewish people. We get to talk to the Jewish people, but they're doing the same thing that our father did. And the same thing happened to our fathers. Right? You ain't never heard the book say this is a war crime. It's part of war. What you mean? The book say, look, this is how the book works. 
I'm going to run up on you. At any point, you can say it's peace. You just got to serve. That's the rules of war. At any point, you can just be like, no, 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 we surrender. Wave the white flag, as they say. You know what I'm saying? It's peace. Now, after that, pay your taxes. Pay your tribute. Right? That's how it works. It's no different from a, these other people doing the same thing. What do you think it is when America put a sanction on somebody? When they tell you, you can't buy or sell from uh, North Korea. That's, that's, that's exactly, this is the same thing as besieging the nation. It's just a different degree of it. Right? If you sanction everything, then you besieged them. Right? That's why this stuff is not, we have to get ourselves out of what these people teach us what wrong and right is. If I'm going to call a Jewish person wrong, it's going to be because they did something wrong. If I'm going to call a Palestinian wrong, it's going to be because they did something wrong. Listen, if we at war, then we, we dropping bombs. That's what we do. If it's time to go to war, we dropping bombs. We didn't have bombs in our book, but you ain't no different from running up cutting somebody's darn head off in a time of war. <coughs> Keep going. Watch this. They ain't wrong for besieging somebody. And at the end of three years, they took it, even in the sixth year of Hezekiah, that in the ninth year of Hosea, king of Israel, Samaria was taken. Mm -hmm. and, the king of, and the king of Assyria did carry away Israel into Assyria. And he put them in Helah and in Habor by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes, because they obeyed not the voice of Yahuwah their God, but transgressed his covenant and all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded and would not hear them nor do them. Mm -hmm. Now in the 14th year of King Hezekiah did Sennacherib, <clears throat> king of Assyria, come up against all the fenced cities of Judah and took them. And Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent to the king of Assyria to Lachish, saying, I have offended. Return from me. That which you put on me will I bear. And the king of Assyria appointed unto Hezekiah, the king of Judah, 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. And Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the Yahuwah and then the treasures of the king's house. Mm -hmm. At that time did Hezekiah cut off the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord and from the pillars which Hezekiah king of Judah had overlaid and gave it to the king of Assyria. Because mm -hmm. that's peace. Yeah, this is when that boy was talking big trash. Right? This is peace. This is what it looked like. Yo, I'm running up on you. You want to go to war or do you want peace? If you say peace, give me the tribute. So what Hezekiah had to do? That's the rule. That's our law. Right? Okay, if I say I got two options, I can go to war with you and you can besiege me and starve all my people. But if I know, hold we got grab um grab Luke grab Luke chapter um Oh man. Grab Luke chapter let's try chapter 14. Give me verse 25 maybe. Luke chapter 14, verse 25. I feel like that's it. If that ain't it, then it's 1725. Uh, and there were the great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father. Yeah, that's it. I think so. I think that's it. He said, If any man come to me and hate not his father. And mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea. And his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. That's right. And whosoever does not bear cannot be my what? Disciple. Can't be my Christian. Disciple. You never heard this man talk, tell you a, a give you a standard. You know these people talk about where they argue about what a real Christian is. Well, that's not a real, that's not real Christianity. That's not a real Christian. How you gonna argue about that? You never seen it defined in a book. Tell me one place in the book where it tells you what you gotta do to be a Christian. I can tell you what you gotta be to, do, to be his disciple. Multiple times he tell you what you if you are my disciple indeed. If you follow in my word, then you are my disciple. If you can't do X, Y, and Z, then you are not worthy to be my disciple. How you gonna call yourself after something that you ain't even got no it's, it don't even got no promise attached to it? These people got us doing silly stuff. Silly stuff. Watch this. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Uh-huh. For which of you intending to build a tower? He said, down, for which of you intending to build a tower? Do what? Sit is not down first and count the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. Right. He said, 
How are you going to build a tower and you haven't sat down to think about, hmm, all right, so I'm going to need 40 tons of brick to build it to the height that I want it. I think I'm going to want some windows. I'm probably going to have to put some wood on there, attach it to the brick. Glass. Glass. I got to have glass. got to have enough glass to fill up all the windows. Okay. No, I think I got what I need. What type of floors I want in my tower? Oh, I'm going to have multiple floors. I got to get some tiles. Right? He said, listen, you're going to build a tower. You got to sit your butt down and plan it out to make sure I have all the materials. Watch what he say, though. But which of you intending to build a tower sit is not down first and count the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. That's happily after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it and all that behold it began to mock him. Saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king? Or what time? king doing what? Going to war against another king. Or what king going to war with another king? Sit is not down first and consult whether he be able to with 10,000 to meet him that comes against him with 20,000. Mm -hmm. Or else, while the other is yet a great a far off, a great way off, he sendeth an embassage and desired conditions of peace. Mm -hmm. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsakes not all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. You have to understand, this is, this is practical wisdom. This is what Yahushua used in terms of being his disciple. He said, listen, if you have a plan to go to war. Why won't you consider to see if you have what it takes to win this war? And if you don't, go make peace. So this is what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah looking like, man, I don't even know. I don't even know if I can win this. So Hezekiah said, you know what? Instead, I right, it's peace. But if you make peace, you have to pay tribute. That's it. It ain't, there's no other, like, there's no in-between option. You fight or you pay tribute. Right? Same thing that's happening in Palestine right now. At any point, Palestine, Palestinians can be like, nah, we good. We'll pay tribute. We'll take it away. You know what I'm saying? Whatever terms y'all set up, okay, y'all don't want us in this land. We got to move. That's the conditions of peace. When you hear, when you hear them talk about treaties and all that, a treaty is a condition of peace. Listen, we signed this agreement. I'm going to stop busting you over your head as long as your people give me this and you let me get this territory and this, that, and the other. You make an agreement to stop fighting. And if you don't follow that agreement, well, I might be back next week. Same thing that's happening in Ukraine with Russia, all that stuff. All this, all the fighting go over. We, If you want me to stop busting you over the head, you have to you have to concede. You have to make peace. And if you make peace, I win. That's the rules of engagement. And that ain't no white people colonizer stuff. That's our book. I mean, they call y'all sure the prince of peace. When he come back, the book say three times a year, the whole world is going to have to come up and serve him. And they can't come empty handed. What you think going to happen? Is he making war against you. I wish I could think of where it's at. He making war against you if you don't show up. I forget. I forget. But uh, I know Isaiah. Like, who is this that comes from Basra? That's what they talk about on that too. Yeah, Isaiah 63. Lighten your butt up. Right? You have to understand that there are conditions of peace. And you're going to have to serve whoever coming if you ain't ready to go to war with them. We can't get put in a mindset of calling stuff wrong just because everybody say it's wrong. It's a lot of stuff we can charge the Palestinians with. And it's a lot of stuff we can charge the Jewish folks with. A ton of stuff we can charge them with. But let's charge them for what the book called wrong. Let's not charge them for all this other silly stuff. Because this stuff will throw your mind into a darn warp. And spin you around. And you'll forget what you got to be anchored in the word. That's it. Just because everybody pointing to somebody saying, oh, that's wrong. It shouldn't be that way. You can't forget. Well, no, this is another. That's why they'll never get me on this Thanksgiving stuff. They'll never, these people will never get me on this. These people will never get me to say, oh, well, America was wrong with, for taking land from the Indians, from the Native Americans. Passover was like similar. What are you talking Do y'all know that we killed a whole nation of Canaanites and took their land from them? That's the part that, that's the part that we don't understand 
the those of us that, that understand that we he, he, Israelites, the part that we don't understand is if the most high God. Goodness gracious. Give me Matthew chapter seven. This is Matthew chapter seven. Give me uh Where verse. Is it, would it say the most high God gives it, gives the land to whom he will, right? Like the like the conquerors. I forget where that. I don't know. Yeah, I can't think of where it said it. I know what you're talking about. Though. Give me um, Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. <clears throat> this is Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. Judge not that ye not be judged. He said, judge not that ye not be judged. Watch this. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. Right? However you judge, that's how you going to be judged. Watch this. And with what meat ye measure, and, what, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Right? However you measure that thing out and say, okay, this is what's appropriate. This is what's inappropriate. <laughs> that's the same measure it's going to be dealt out to you. Right, keep going. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, and consider not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or mm -hmm. well, how will you say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, the beam is in thine own eye? Mm -hmm. Thou hypocrite. First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shall you see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. This is the reason why a lot of the Israelites that speak on this topic. And speak on what's going on in the Middle East and the going on in our land, right? This is the reason why they get it wrong. This is the reason why they sitting here talking about the Jewish people. Because they they not it's it's all out of they doing everything out of hate, right? Simply because they hate the Jewish people, then they point at the Jewish people. And then you got some of them that rightfully so. I'm not saying they I'm not what I'm about to say, I'm not criticizing. You got some of them that stay out of it completely. Ain't none of my business. And that's right. It's right that for them to say it ain't none of my business, right? But then you got others that point out them very clearly like, nah, the Jewish people wrong. They shouldn't be besieging them. It's a humanitarian crisis. And they repeating what they hear on the news just because now they taking the news side just because it works in their favor. That's not proper judgment. What will end up happening is you now are condemning all of our fathers. All of our fathers that went to war and besieged the nation and took it over. King David, King Solomon, all of our kings, our great kings, you've now condemned them because you said the Jewish people was wrong for doing it. Now you condemn them. When you look at, oh, America wrong for taking the Native American land. Now you condemn us because we took the Canaanites land at the command of God. How you know, how you know America wasn't a rod of, 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 uh, of God's anger? That's how that's how I think about all of the empires throughout the The history. Rod of God's anger. These Native Americans <laughs> over here darn smoking darn huku sticks and darn twisting stuff inside of darn pots and sage and burning all this weird stuff, worshiping animals and all types of sacrificing their own sacrificing their kids and all types of stuff. They doing the exact thing that the Canaanites were doing the same thing. Some people say they descendants of the Canaanites. You cannot just because something, just because your enemy or who you see as your enemy, right, is in a position, in a weak position or a position where you can team up with other people to be against them. You cannot. Our law is against putting our hands with the majority of people unrighteously. Everything got to be judged righteously. We have to we have to resist the flesh temptation to just jump on a bandwagon and point and blame people. What I'm going to do that? That's like these churches. These churches be false preachers. But guess what I'm never going to criticize them for? I ain't never criticizing the pastor for taking money from his people. If people give him money and he take it and use it however he want, I'm never criticizing him for that. I got a long list of stuff that I'm going to criticize some of these pastors for outside of taking money that people willingly gave him. I criticize him for how he got the money, how he asked for it. I criticize how he guilt the people into doing it. I'm not criticizing them for taking it once they give it to him. 
I'm not gonna criticize no pastor for for uh for uh you know what I'm saying for 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 having 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 uh you know seven seven different every night there's a different uh what's it called a different service every night of the week they have a different service I'm not criticized what would I criticize that for there's nothing wrong with that I'm gonna criticize you for what you preaching at those seven services because if it were righteous you should be collecting money if it were righteous it would be great to have seven services and you teaching the truth. That's spectacular. The problem is not the seven services. The problem is not you collecting money. The problem is the truth is not being taught. We have to judge righteously. Otherwise, we will be judged and we are going to end up being guilty of condemning our own people. You have to understand the most high God is going to use. A lot of people think is power in the it's power in the tongue. And what they think that mean is if I speak it, it comes to existence. If I repeat to myself and had a positive affirmation and say I'm a good person enough and say that I'm rich and I'm successful enough, then I'll actually be rich and successful. That is not what the book teaches. That is hocus darn pocus. Yeah, God was the only person that actually said something and it was dead. Put yourself in the place of God thinking you're doing that stuff. Like, Let there be light and there was light. So it was like. You ain't got no power to speak nothing into no darn it. Sit your butt down. Wow. Right? What the book is saying is that everything that you say will be judged. So in other words, if I say out of my mouth, the Jewish people is wrong for besieging. Right? Besieging these Palestinians. What's going to, excuse me, what's going to happen is when it's judgment time, and the sinner don't repent. What they gonna do? What the Most High God gonna do is he gonna put it on the. I just I imagine. It, I imagine it this way. He gonna put it on the big screen. He gonna run your whole life back. He gonna open up the books. He gonna run your whole life back. And he gonna press pause right here. Hold on. You remember when you said, uh, you know what I mean? Remember when you said that the Jewish people was wrong for besieging these people? They're wrong now. But you said it was for besieging them, didn't? You? Okay. All right. Well, what about this? And he's going to take it to something else and he's going to show that you're a hypocrite. He's going to gonna show you when you were sitting in your, your little Israelite camp where we are talking about besieging another nation and you got up and start clapping like, oh yeah, we, I'm happy we besieged him. We doing the work of the most high God. He's going to catch your butt up being a hypocrite. Then he's going to look at you and say, you hypocrite. And you think you're doing something because you know that that's the synagogue of Satan out there. So you think anything you say against them is right. That's a lie. Even when you're dealing with somebody that they're wrong, your judgment got to be right. We cannot slip. We don't. We can't afford to make any mistakes. Everything got to be correct, and it got to be by the book. Otherwise, you're gonna be a Pharisee. You're gonna be a Christian. You're gonna be a hypocrite. Y'all be quiet in there. We can't be hypocrites. We got to judge it right by the book. Everything we think, everything we say, got to be as the oracles of the most high God. If it's not, take it back to the drawing book, <coughs> repent, keep going. All right, let's go back. This is second, uh, second King. What verse we leave off on? Uh, 30, oh, 14. Second King chapter 14. Baby girl, be quiet, please. This is 2 Kings chapter uh, 18, verse 14. What does the book say? And Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent to the king of Assyria the Lakers, saying, I have offended. Return from me. That which thou puttest on me will I bear. Right? He said, listen. I messed up. That's what he said when he offended. I can't win this war. He tell, okay, look, I've offended. Return for me. In other words, stop besieging me. Whatever you put on me, I'll bear. This is peace. I'll pay whatever tribute you say I got to pay. Keep going. And the king of Assyria appointed unto Hezekiah, king of Judah, 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. 
Mm-hmm. And Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasuries of the king's house. Mm-hmm. At that time, did Hezekiah cut off the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord and from the pillars which Hezekiah, king of Judah, have overlaid and gave it to the king of Assyria. So you remember Joash, uh, our previous king, remember he started off, you know what I'm saying, super young. You know what I'm saying? Eight years old, I think he was. He started to he started to call shots. He was raised by uh, Jehoiada, I believe, I believe his uh, name was the priest. the priest, right? Remember he remember he was raised by the priest, so he had in his younger life he had an affinity for the temple, and so he ended up as king. He said, you know, what I'm saying he he repaired the temple. So a lot of these repairs came from Joash, right? Then over the years, certain people did certain things, right? But a lot of the a lot of it started from Joash. Now Hezekiah having to cut off some of the gold so that he can pay off uh, uh, the king of Assyria. Keep going. And the king of Assyria sent Tartan and Rab Saris and Rab Shika from Lachish to King Hezekiah with a great host against Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. And they went up and came to Jerusalem. And when they were come up, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pool, which is in the highway of the Fuller's Field. Mm-hmm. And when they had called to the king, there came out to them Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, which was over the household. Watch this. And Shebna, the scribe, and, and, jo- and Joel. So look, J- Joah. You got some people that were sent by the king of Assyria. He- king Hezekiah already tried to make peace. Already tried to send the tribute. King of Assyria come back. Right? He sent his men. He called out to the king, but three of the king's men showed up instead of the king. Now watch this discussion. And Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder. And Rabshika said unto them, speak ye now to Hezekiah. This is the king of Assyria talking. So the king, the king of Assyria, it's not him talking specifically, but this is the, his representative talking on his behalf. He says, speak now unto Hezekiah. Watch this. Thus says the great king, the mm-hmm. king of Assyria. What confidence is this wherein thou trust? Thou say, but they are but vain words. I have counsel and strength for the war. Now on whom dost thou trust, and thou rebellest against me? Now behold, thou trust upon the staff of this bruised reed, even upon Egypt, on which if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. Right? So he's starting off, and he's saying, listen, 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 listen. Where are you getting all this confidence from? What make y'all think y'all can mess with us? Right? What makes you think you can mess with us? What makes y'all think that y'all can fight against us? Y'all trusting in Egypt. But Egypt is just like uh it's like a it's like a stick that that's broken that if you lean on it, that thing break and then the sharp part get cut into your hand. Cause it break into, you know, you ever had a stick, it break and it's sharp. You know what I'm saying? He's saying, like, you lean on that thing, it break, and then it cut into your hand. He said, that's what it is. He said, that's what it's like to trust Egypt against me. Watch this. So is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, unto all that trust on him. Uh-huh. But if you say unto me, we trust in Yahuwah our God, is not that he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah has taken away, and has said, uh, said to Judah and Jerusalem, you shall worship before this altar in, altar in Jerusalem? Why is, why is the king of Assyria sending this message? Man, he's sitting on the top now. It's like, your God can't save you. You just broke down all his altars. But that's what he thinks. That's what they think. Why would he think that? Because he saw it. Because that's what Hezekiah did. When he became king. He got rid of all of the idols, the worship places. But why would, why would, is that, that wasn't Yah's altar, though. No, it wasn't. So why does, why does the king of Assyria believe it was? Because he got, uh, he took over Israel. And Israel was never doing it right. So you remember when Jeroboam set everything up, he said, listen, I do not want them to go back into Judah because otherwise they'll run back to Rehoboam in the house of a uh, house of David. So he said, instead, I'm going to set up this place in Bethel and this place in Dan. And they can worship here instead. Right. So notice what the king of Assyria is saying. The king of Assyria is like, man. Hezekiah done tore down all the altars. You think y'all gonna save you? Do you think Yahuwah gonna save you when he didn't tore down all his altars and he telling you you gotta worship here in Jerusalem? You can tell he got his information from the northern tribe because those are the tribes that he just took over. And remember, he put Gentiles in the land and then he had to figure out, well, why is the animals eating them up? Ah, let me get somebody 
one of their priests to teach them how to live in the land. So King of Assyria got some of that lesson too. You got to imagine it. They had to present this stuff. They looking like they bring it to them. Like, uh, so what's the report? What's the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, the Medes are doing pretty good. You know what I'm saying? We, you know what I'm saying? We got them taken care of. The Israelites are over there. They kind of mixing in very well. Um, the people in Babylon, they're doing all right. A little bit of trouble, but we handled it. It's good. Is there anywhere that's having real problems? Well, uh, let me check. Yes, Samaria. Samaria, big problems in Samaria. See, in Samaria, what's going on is, let me read the report. Report says Samaria, everybody getting ate up by lions and bears and all types of stuff. It's bad out there. Why do you think that's happening? I don't know. I mean, I don't feel like that stuff was happening when the Israelites were there. What are we going to do about it? Here's what I think. I think the gods of their land is angry. Because them people ain't serving the God right. Okay, well, do we have anybody that can teach them how to serve the God? I mean, somebody give me a solution here. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they look, we got just a guy. It's one priest. We can take him. We picked him up from uh, Samaria. He's a good guy. We'll send him down there. He can teach them all. All right, we'll send him. Wait, what's he going to teach him? Bring him in here. You know what I'm saying? You got to imagine. He brought him in there. He's like, what are you going to teach him? I want to make sure you teach him something that's okay. Oh, well, you know, what we do is we worship on the high places. We, You know what I'm saying? Our King Jeroboam set up this stuff for us, this, that, another. And so he gave them the improper teaching, the teaching of the Samaritans. If we fast forward and we look to the Samaritan woman that Yahushua spoke to, she had the same teaching, exact same teaching. You're going to see that she spoke with Yahushua about that same teaching because it came from King Jeroboam, right? So now the king of Assyria has this information and he's under the impression that Yahuwah has altars all over and high places all over, right? Because that's what the, the, that's what the Samarians did. So now he's coming back and he's talking big fucker based off of the information that he knows. I know your God ain't happy with you. You, th you think your God going to save you? You didn't tore down. He got all the confidence in the world. You ain't even got no God that's on your side right now. You tore down all his altars and switched up his rules because he think he got it right. It's no different from sitting here arguing with a darn Christian or with a Muslim. And they mind, they know, listen, I heard it from so-and-so, this is who God is, and this is how he operates. It's just a different religion. But they think they're talking about the same God. You're not. You know what I'm saying? You're not. You think you are. You ain't talking about my Yahuwah. You think you are, though. Let's keep talking. Watch this. Now, therefore, I pray thee, give pledges to my Lord, the king of Assyria, and I will deliver thee 2,000 horses, if thou be able on thy part to set riders upon them. Right? So he said, listen. I got you. Don't even worry about it. But give the tribute. Remember, Hezekiah already trying to get this stuff together. Right? <laughs> but he's saying, give the tribute. If you do it, I'll send you a couple horses. I'll send you 2,000 horses. Y'all probably ain't even got enough people to ride on them darn things. You know what I'm talking about? He being disrespectful. He coming to them. Came to their gate. Why you got all this come? What, what in the world make y'all feel like y'all can rebel against us? Oh, Egypt? You do know leaning on him is like leaning on a broken stick and it's going to cut into your darn hand. Who you think going to save you? Yah? You think you who is going to save you? Y'all didn't tore down all his down altars. This man Hezekiah got y'all tearing down his altars and saying that you got to worship here. That's foolishness. That ain't the, that ain't the message I heard. So he thinking he think everything is on his side right now. Watch this. Keep going. How then wilt thou turn away the face of the captain of the least of my master's servants and put thy trust on Egypt for chariots and for horsemen? Right. King of Assyria feels disrespected. Like Egypt? You going to them for chariots and horses? We the ones that got the chariots. We will whoop Egypt out. You think they tough? We the ones that you should be listening to. Right. Keep going. Watch this. Am I now come up without the without Yahuwah against this place to destroy it? Right. Listen to what he's saying. He's saying, are you under the impression? <laughs> he said, are you under the impression that Yahuwah is not on my side? Don't you know that Yahuwah, listen to what he's saying. Don't you know that Yahuwah is on my side? You think you think I did this without Yahuwah signing off on it? He's absolutely right about what he's saying now. Right. Keep going. Watch this. Yahuwah said to me, 
go up against this land and destroy it. Mm -hmm. Then said Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and Shebna and Joah. Now this is Israelites talking, right? Watch this. In Rabshakeh, unto Rabshakeh, speak, I pray thee, to thy servants in the Syrian language, for we understand it. And talk not with us in the Jews' language, in the ears of the people that are on the wall. Right? So now listen, listen to how this played out. The man got the talking. But you think I came up here without Yahuwah? No, Yahuwah told me, go down there and take that land. He said, Yahuwah told me to. Now he lying. He didn't run the darn mouth to poke at him. But he said, Yahuwah told me to go down there and take that land. So immediately, Elijah, yo, yo, hey, do me a favor, bro. Why don't you, uh, why don't you talk to me in the Syrian tongue? You know what I'm saying? Because we can understand that. But don't talk to me in the Israelite tongue. You know what I'm saying? Don't talk to me in the Hebrew tongue. Because all the people standing there, you got to imagine when he get up there, it's just a man, right? Man, he come out. He probably got a big old army behind him. He's standing at the top. He probably got this loud voice. He projected. Uh, Daniel said he at the door. He projecting you gotta, and got to buzz him in. Make sure you get the retinal scan right. <laughs> you got to You got. He projecting. He talking loud. Everybody can hear him. All the people starting to crowd around, looking over because we got a wall, right? So all the people starting to crowd around, looking up at the wall, like who is that talking? And then all of a sudden, he gets to talking about Yahuwah, and you know that's special to us. So now we might get to we. Eliakim knew. Eliakim was looking like if they get to hearing this, they might actually start believing that Yahuwah talking to this man. Then every, everybody going to lose heart. Right? So he's in there. He's looking like, all right, just talk to us in the Syria tongue because he don't want all the people to hear him. But watch what happens. Well, Rabshakeh said unto them. Rabshakeh, my... Now remember, Rabshakeh is speaking for the king of Assyria. Right? So this is the king of Assyria talking at this point, essentially. Not literally, but his message. Hath my master sent me to thy master and to thee to speak these words? Hath he not sent me to the men which sit on the wall that they may hear their own dung and drink their own pee with you? Right. So he's saying, I, I didn't come here to talk to y'all. I know you want me to talk to you in the Syrian tongue so only you can understand me. But he said this message is not for the king and this message is not for his, his princes. He said this message is for the people. I want the people that's sitting on the wall. I want them to hear so they can be like, wait, this is some foolishness. He's trying to convince the people, right? That's what he's trying to convince. Come on. Keep going. Watch this. Walk, baby, walk. Walk, baby, walk. Walk, baby, walk. Right. Then Rav Shika stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language and spake, saying, Hear the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Uh -huh. Thus says the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you. He said, Let not Hezekiah deceive you. For he shall not be able to deliver you out of his hand. He said, Because he's not going to be able to deliver you out of his hand. Watch this. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in Yahuwah, saying, Yahuwah will surely deliver us. Mm -hmm. And this city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. He said, don't let him let you trust in Yahuwah either. Because he said, Yahuwah, he going to tell you Yahuwah going to surely deliver you and not let us get into this city. But watch this. Hearken not, hearken not to Hezekiah. For thus says the king of Assyria, uh -huh. make an agreement with me by a present and come out to me and then eat ye every man his own vine and every one his fig tree and drink ye every one that waters of his, every one the waters of his cistern until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards. All right. So that's what his MO is. Take over the nations and move them somewhere else. But he said, listen. If y'all, and he's talking to the individuals, if y'all come bring some type of tribute to me, right? Y'all can eat of your own vine temporarily now till I find a place for y'all that's similar to y'all. I'm going to find y'all somewhere that's just like where y'all live at, right? So that was his MO. That was his way of keeping control. Let me take you out of your environment, put you in a similar but a different environment, right? And that's how he exerted his dominance. This was a bad boy, the king of Assyria. Is a bad man. That boy used to, 
He used to just take nations, uproot the whole nations, and just move people around. That's sick. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know how much money that costs? To uproot all these people, transport them all the way over here, uproot the people from over there, put them over here, and you just shuffling people around. But if you got the money and you got the power, guess what? Mm, that's what I want to do. Right? So he's talking big trash to these people. He's like, don't let Hezekiah deceive you. Watch this. Keep going. Hearken not unto Hezekiah. Wait. In the land of oil and oil, oil, olive, and of honey, that ye may live and not die. And hearken not unto Hezekiah when he persuades you, saying, Yahuwah will deliver us. Mm -hmm. Hath any of the gods of the nations delivered at at all his land, uh, his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Right? He said, Has any of the gods of any of these nations at all delivered the hands out of the king of Assyria? He's looking at, he looked like, okay, look, we just took down Syria, not Assyria, Syria, right? We just took down Syria. We took down Israel, right? Ammon, Moab, they named, they named all these nations. We got all these boys, the Medes, you know, all these boys, we knocked them off. Did they, all of them got gods. They, he trying to appeal to their sisters. Every one of these nations got gods. When have we been stopped? Oh, so y'all think y'all the one. Y'all think magically your God going to be the one to stop us. That's foolishness. Right? That's what he's saying. That's foolishness. Watch this. Where are the gods of Hamas and Arpad? Where are the gods, where are the gods of Sepharvan, Hina, and Iva? Have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Right? Samaria. Right? Keep going. Who are they among all gods of the countries that have delivered their country out of my hand that Yahuwah should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? Yeah, what do you think Yahuwah going to do? Right? That's how he thought. He's like, what do you think Yahuwah going to do? Right? We can knock down some of the popular gods. This little, little Yahuwah, y'all the only person that worship Yahuwah. You know what I'm saying? What do you think he going to do? Watch this. But the people held their peace and answered him not a word, for the king's commandment was saying, answer him not. Then came Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, which was over the house, the household of uh, Sheba, the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, to Hezekiah with their clothes ripped and told him the words of Rabshakeh. And it came to pass, when King Hezekiah heard it, that he ripped his clothes. And covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of Yahuwah. And he sent Eli Eliakim, which was over the household, and Shebna, the scribe, and the elders of the priests covering with sackcloth to mm -hmm. Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. Right? So when, when Hezekiah heard it, he ripped his clothes. And then he went straight to the temple. Right? And then he about to pray. But then, meanwhile, he like, listen, the rest of y'all, go find Isaiah. Because remember, I like, like we started... Isaiah, he been listening to Isaiah and he trusts the most high God. So he looking at it like, Isaiah, I know you said that the king of Assyria at the end, he going to be destroyed. So he looking like, man, I ain't worried about this stuff. Don't answer him a word. You know what I'm saying? Trying to be confident. And then the king of Assyria pop up like, uh, I don't know where y'all get all this confidence from. You know what I'm saying? We about to wipe the floor with y'all butts if y'all don't come out here. So now he looking like, uh, this is not quite how I expected it. But how did he handle it? Let me go right to the Most High God, and I want y'all to go find the man of God. Right? He didn't make no rashes. Ahaz handled it different. Ahaz, it got tight. This is the same scenario, right? It's the exact same scenario they had. Ahaz, same thing. He got besieged by Israel and Syria, not Assyria, Israel and Syria. And when he got besieged, he was like, yo, yo, yo. Yo, Assyria, come help me. And that's how Assyria got into the region and started taking everybody over. Right? So now, same thing has happened to the king Hezekiah, but his response is different. He went to the temple of the Most High God, and he sent his people to go find Isaiah, who's the man of God that got the word of God. Watch how I play out. And they said unto him, Thus says Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble and of rebuke and of blasphemy. For the children are come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. Right? The, the children have come to the birth, but there is not strength to bring forth. In other words, he's giving you a picture of a woman who's having a baby. And she's ready. It's like, okay, it's time to have a baby. But she doesn't have enough strength to push the baby out. Right? That's a terminal situation. 
Right? So he's saying, listen, this is the type of situation we in. We is there. We is strong. We were confident. But now it's the moment. I don't think we got what we take. You know what I'm saying? I don't think we got to take. You know what I'm saying? I think these boys going to get us. Right? Let's see. Keep going. It may be. It may be Yahuwah thy God will hear all the words of Rabshika, whom the king of Assyria, his master, has sent to reproach the living God mm -hmm. and will reprove the words which Yahuwah thy God has heard. Wherefore, lift up thy prayer for the remnant that are left. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah and Isaiah said unto them, thus shall ye say to your master, mm -hmm. thus says Yahuwah, be not afraid of the words which thou hast heard with which the servants of the king of Assyria has blasphemed me. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will send a blast upon him and he shall hear a rumor and shall return to his own land and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own, in his own land. Mm -hmm. So Rabshika returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna for he had heard that he was departed from Lachish. And when he heard say of Terica, Tir king of Ethiopia, behold, he is come out, out to fight against thee. He sent messengers again unto Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall ye speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not thy God, in whom thou trust, deceive thee, saying, Je Jerusalem shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Mm -hmm. Behold, thou hast heard what the kings of Assyria has done to all the lands by destroying them utterly. And shall you be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered them which my fathers have destroyed? As Gozan, as Haran, and Rezeph, and the children of Eden, which were in Thalassar. Where is the king of Hamath, and the king of Arpad, and the king of the city of Sepharvaim, of Hena, and Iva? And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord. Watch this. And spread it before the Lord. So he got this message. He got it from the, the messenger of the king of Assyria. It reiterated some of the stuff that he said, right? It basically like, what makes you think Yahuwah going to save you? You know what I'm saying? We about to wipe the floor with your butt. He got this message. He went to the house of the uh, house of Yahuwah. And then what he did is he spread the paper out, spread the message out, right? And then watch what happened. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwell between the cherubims that are the God, thou art the God, even thou alone of all the kings and kingdoms of the earth. Mm -hmm. Thou hast made heaven and earth. Yahuwah, bow down thine ear and hear. Open Yahuwah in thine eyes and see. And hear the words of Sennacherib, which hath sent him to reproach the living God. Mm -hmm. Of a truth, Yahuwah, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their lands. Mm -hmm. And have cast their gods into the fire. But they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood mm -hmm. and stone. Therefore they have destroyed them. Now therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech thee, save, the, save thou us out of, this, out of his hand. That all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are Yahuwah God, even you only. Mm -hmm. Then Isaiah the son of Amos sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus says Yahuwah God of Israel, that which you have prayed to, to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. This is the word of Yahuwah that Yahuwah has spoken concerning him. Notice, notice his prayer wasn't, Oh Lord, forgive him. Just change his mind, Lord. Lord, let us be friends so that we have peace. That wasn't his prayer. His prayer, look, show him something, Lord. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Show him something so everybody know that you the one. He talking big trash about you now. He talking big trash. I know you ain't going to let that slide. Go ahead and show him something. Right? It's only these Christians that got us, you know what I'm saying, got us thinking that we got to pray. You know what I'm saying? All these soft prayers and we got to pretend like, you know what I'm saying, this is how we really think. No, nah, man, when you pray to the most high God, you got to pray to him what you're thinking. You got to pray to him, you know what I'm saying, make it plain to him. Spell it out. Don't don't assume he already know. You know he already know it. Still say it. It's a humbling experience. Well, God, you know what I need. You know what I'm saying? Nah. Spell it out. What you need. You know what I'm saying? What you need. What you need me to do for you. You know what I'm saying? You gotta spell it out for the most high God. You see how he laid the whole thing out. Listen, I got this paper right here. This man talking big trash. Hear the words that he talking about. You know what I'm saying? Everybody thinking. He spelled the whole thing out. He look everybody thinking that you ain't real. <laughs> He took over these other nations because they got idols and gods of wood that they made with their own hands. But that ain't you, God. You know what I'm saying? He's talking to him. That ain't you, God. You the real, you the one true living God. Show these people who you are. He had a spell. Do you think God needed him to tell him that? No. But he need to say it because that's what God going to respond to. Right? Keep going. Watch this. This is the word that Yahuwah has spoken concerning him. 
the virgin, the daughter of Zion, has despised thee and laughed thee to scorn. Mm -hmm. The daughter of Jerusalem hath shaken her head at thee, whom thou hast reproached and blasphemed, mm -hmm. and against whom thou hast exalted thy voice and lifted up thine eyes on high, mm -hmm. even against the Holy One of Israel. By, the, by thy messengers thou hast reproached Yahuwah, and hast said, With the multitude of my chariots I am come up to the height of the mountains, to the sides of Lebanon, and will cut down the tall cedar trees thereof, and the choice fir trees thereof. And I will enter into the lodgings of his, of his border and into the forest of his Carmel. I have digged and drunk strange. Strange. I have digged and drunk strange. Was and with the sole of my feet have I dried up all the rivers of the besieged places. Hast thou not heard long ago how I have done it, and of ancient times that I have formed it? Now have I brought it to pass that thou should that thou shouldest be laid to waste, fenced cities into ru into ruinous heaps. Therefore, their inhabitants were of small power; they were dismayed and confounded. They were as the grass of the field, and as the green herb, as the grass of the housetops, and as corn blasted before it grows up, before it be grown up. But I know thy abode and thy going out and coming in, and thy rage against me, because thy rage against me and thy tumult has come up into mine ears. Therefore, I will put my hook in thy nose and thy bridle in thy lips, and I will turn thee back by the way in which you came. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall eat this year such, you shall eat this year such things as grows of themselves. And in the second year, that which springs of the same. And in the third year, sow ye and reap and plant vineyards and eat the fruit thereof. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall yet again take root downward and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they shall escape out of Mount Zion. The zeal of Yahuwah of hosts shall do this. Mm -hmm. Therefore, thus says Yahuwah, concerning the king of Israel, He shall not come into the city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the way shall he return, and shall not come into the city, says Yahuwah. For I will defend this city to save it for my own sake, and for my servant David's sake. And it came to pass that night, that the angel of Yahuwah went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians 100 and 185,000. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt in Nineveh. And it came to pass as he was worshiping in the house of Nishrach, what happened? God, that Adrimelech and Sherezer and who with that sons his sons they did what smote him with the sword and they escaped into the land of Armenia and and Esar Hadon his son reigned in his stead just like the prophet Isaiah said prophet Isaiah said his own people he gonna he gonna he gonna have a controversy he gonna hear a rumor he gonna go home and they gonna kill him his own sons killed his butt right it's important that we we really internalize these stories because what's gonna happen is there's going to come a time that either us or descendants of us or people like us are going to have to experience something like this. Look how dramatic it gets before the most high God gets involved. At any point, the most high God could have did this. He could have shut this thing down early if he wanted to, but he didn't. It got dramatic. It got to the point where he took over. Look, just put yourself in Judah's position. We sitting here. Okay, we sitting here. You about to go to war with Israel? You about to go to war with Syria? Whew. Dodge that bullet. Oh, Israel picked off. Oh crap. Syria picked off. Oh crap. All these other nations around us getting picked off. Oh crap. Now Syria at our depth. This is all happening. Year after year. This is all happening right in front of us. Now Syria at our doorstep. And they talking big trash to us. And we seen everybody around us get picked off. Right? Then they stand it up. At any point, most I got can put an end to this. Right? But he don't. Talking big trash to us. All right, we about to get y'all butts. Y'all keep playing. And we all know that can happen. We've seen them do it right next door. Right? And the most I got wait until it's a bunch of they soldiers right outside ready to take the order. And he kill them all. Just like that. Then the king run home and he get killed. Just like that. Right? 
we gonna have to understand that man these prophecies we read about oh yeah the most high god gonna rescue y'all and he gonna put you into the wilderness it may come with a little bit of adversity it's gonna come with like a little bit of a test and it's happened throughout all of our scriptures where it start with Moses. what happened I told him i'm gonna save y'all and what happened moses go down there pharaoh make the work even harder still enslaved we still captivity. We looking like, what is this foolishness? We believed in you. We all rallied around Moses. We sitting there like, yo, man, we about to get out right now? Let's do it. Let's go. He go, Moses get up there. You know, Moses, he probably sitting strong. I know how this thing about to go because he forgot the most high God said it was going to be difficult. I like to believe he forgot, right? You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go up there strong. I'm going to tell him. I'm going to tell him just like this. Pharaoh, he better, Pharaoh better watch who he talking to. You know what I'm You go out there, Pharaoh. This little staff. See it become a snake. Better watch out, boy. Let my people go now. Pharaoh looking like, what in the world is wrong with y'all? Nobody care nothing about no darn snake. You know what I'm saying? I got a magician that do that too. Uh, clearly, since y'all got so much time in y'all hands, don't even supply them with the straw and the brick. Get your own straw and darn brick. Make your darn brick. And you got to keep your quota up. Get your butts and sit your go get your butt and go work on my darn fields. Right? So now we're looking at it like this is a bad idea. Because the most high God going to make it dramatic. Then after that, what happened? Moses go back. All right. I'm put this plague on you. Pharaoh still say no. I'm going to put this plague on Pharaoh. Still. Pharaoh said no every single time. It get dramatic. Then he finally let us go. And then what happened? Chase. We going out. We think we free. We celebrating like, oh, thank the Lord. Passover, man, that's a great. I can't wait till we do this next year, boy. Now, that was a good food, wasn't it? Yeah, no. Let me get some of your unleavened bread. We walking, eating. All of a sudden, we look back and we see them boys coming on the chariots. It's like, oh crap. And then we like, okay, we can get away though. We running, we running, we running, we running. Then what happened? Eat the part. It ain't nowhere to go. They got us pinned. It's water right there, and it's Egyptians behind us. And these boys are ready for blood because all they firstborn kids is going on account of some stuff we wanted. We thought that was it. What Moses do? No, before he split the street, he cried out to the Most High God like, yo, what do we on me? What type of shit is this? <laughs> he cried out to him like, what type? Because it has to get dramatic. The most high God going to push you. How you going to handle it when you can't see a way out for yourself? That's when it's real. You going to cut and hide? You going to cheat? You going to take a side deal? Moses could have been like, all right, look, look. I'll tell y'all what. We'll go back. You don't kill all these people. I didn't. I thought this would work. It didn't. Moses could have broke. The people was ready for Moses to break. Moses was like, man, I, I hear y'all, hear y'all. Just give me a second. Yo, what, 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 are we, what are we doing? You told me to bring these people out. I thought you were going. What are you doing? Did you set us up? You were like, no, nah, no. Nah, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to see what y'all got. I'm trying to see what y'all made of. You know, what you want me to do? Man, stop crying. Boy, just uh, open up the seat behind you. Do what? And now from that experience, we get to see something we've never seen before. Water split and we walk around on dry ground. That's crazy. Look at this. We get to this moment. We get to see something we've never seen before. All these people laid out dead around us. The king, the big king that's been taking care of all this stuff. He go out and he get killed. We ain't never heard nothing like that before. Right? Most I got to do it. It got to get dramatic. So what does that teach us? It's going to get tough. It's going to get hard. But our perspective has to be when it is impossible, we go to the most high God and we maintain our faith. Right? <clears throat> when the king, when the king, King Hezekiah, when he did it, he said, listen, I'm going to go to the temple. He panicking though. You ain't got to pretend like it ain't nothing wrong. He panicking. Moses panicked. Everybody panics. You ain't got to pretend like, oh, no, it's cool. We got this. You ain't got to pretend that they ain't high. Listen, all right, I'm about to go to the temple. Give me the letter. I'm going to spread out in front of the most like, y'all, you, you, all three of y'all go, go get, go get Isaiah. 
this that's what we should be doing because I, I just feel like I don't know I, just, I got you 12 between the channel I just feel like you, the man freaking out because he think all the people about to die he feel response when you listen when you a leader and you love the people and you feel you put yourself respond a lot of the people can't lead nobody these people don't care these people don't really care they just trying to get it in for themselves but when you love the people you care you don't want that blood on your hands like, man, I've been, I, I've been believing what Isaiah saying, but it don't look like that thing about to work out. Man, go talk to Isaiah, man, because I, I still trust him. You know what I'm saying? He got to tell me something, though. I ain't going to be taking this alone. Isaiah, tell us what you took. You took. You the one that I've been listening to. Come here. Isaiah's like, no, nah, man, it's all right. You got to even think about that. Isaiah didn't come. Isaiah somewhere else. He ain't even see Isaiah. Isaiah, like, yeah, go tell your master. He didn't come like, all right, show me where he at. You know what I'm saying? He just go tell, you know what I'm saying? Go tell the king, you know what I'm saying? X, Y, and Z. So even that probably feel away. Like, man, you can't come here and stand in the heat with us. Like, no, nah, man, ain't my job. And guess what? You got to take that and walk in it and trust it and believe it. At any point, if you don't, you end up like Ahab. Right? End up a, like Ahaz. And Ahaz is the whole reason it's playing out this way. Had he trusted the Most High God, it wouldn't be playing out this way. It would have played out a little differently. Right? Keep going. That's the end of the chapter. That's the end of it? Mm -hmm. Alright. Well, uh, so that's what? End of chapter 18, right? Yeah. No, 19. End of chapter 19. Okay. So we're going to pick up next week in chapter 20. Right? And uh, and talk a little bit more about uh, Hezekiah at this point, how he starts to try to rebuild things, and then uh, how you know what I'm saying we're gonna kind of talk about. It's gonna be important to talk about the difference between um, punishment and consequences. All right, punishment comes when there's wrongdoing, but everything we do has consequences. Right, we could do something that's not wrong. Right, it's not a sin. But it in itself still can have a consequence. There should be no guilt because of it, right? But there's still a consequence. As a result of doing it, there is a reaction that's going to happen, right? And so we're going to talk a little bit about that next week um, as we read through Second uh, Kings chapter 20 and, 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 and further. Any questions? Any questions online? Any questions? See what y'all got. It was some serious trash talk. That's that's a fact. That was a fact. I like this thing. I like I like the I, I have to admit, I like the way the king of Assyria was talking that trash. Boy. <laughs> I'm like, this boy is beside himself. This Damn, boy, <laughs> this boy what boy one of them other guys say? He oh, think he the boy. one. Boy. You think? You don't even got, I'll give you 2,000 horses. You don't even got nobody to ride them, though. Especially like taking over like a nation that like, everybody's already scared of. You just take Taking them out, but you gotta you gotta look at it just like we talking right now. That's prophecy because Isaiah said he said Israel gonna mock you. I mean, he said uh, Judah Zion is gonna mock you. You know what I'm saying? Judah is gonna be laughing at you, right? And to this day, you see how we are. We looking at like that boy thought he was doing something, <laughs> right? At the end of the day, man, you trust the Most High God. That thing gonna work <coughs> out. We just gotta we just gotta live and die by the book every ounce of it every as big or as little we can't wait for the big stuff some of us it's gonna be easy when it's big you know it's gonna be easy when look when we in besieged, you know it's like yeah this is it this is what's described in revelations we're gonna be as bold as all out there it's gonna be easy but we ain't gonna get to that point if the small stuff don't matter to us you won't even most high god won't even let you be in the eye in my opinion in my thought process, I don't even think the most high God gonna let you even be in that position if the small stuff don't don't matter to you. We gotta take the small stuff serious because otherwise, if how you get there, if you got if you got compromised and tricked before you even get to the, the a chance to, you know what I'm saying, stand tall and be righteous, how you gonna even get there? <clears throat> we fold over silly stuff. EP, we got we just gotta have it in our mind. Ain't nothing making us fold. Not not fold. I don't care. I don't care nothing about folding in the worldly sense. I'm talking about can't nothing make us fold against the most high God word. His word you stand strong. I don't care nothing about yeah, okay, yeah, you know, like you know, I uh 
trying to think of what's a stupid example of stuff they got going on right now. They try to pressure people to do. Like, yeah, I might, I might, I might vote for Biden. I ain't voting for Biden. You can forget it. I'm not voting for Biden. <laughs> but I might vote for Biden. You know what I'm saying? Y'all might pressure me and be like, oh, you ain't black unless you vote for Biden. And maybe some people fail for that. I ain't got, you know what I'm saying? I don't care that about you. you folded now. Don't get me wrong. You definitely folded. But that's not the fold I'm talking about. I'm talking about something a little more sinister. I'm talking about when it comes to the book, right? I'm talking about I'm talking about when when you stub your darn toe and start yelling out a cuss word. That's the fold I'm talking about. It's little stuff, right? In our minds, that stuff is little. Most our God, not so small, right? Not so small, right? We lying and killing folks and all that stuff. Mm, not so small the most I got. Right? That's the stuff we can't fold on. Right? Stand tall. Let me see what we got. They say it just occurred to them that you were in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> There's like hologram. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? He's not even really here. See, my arm is going through him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like he's really sitting there. All right. Well, fellowship call tomorrow for everybody who want to join. Um, tomorrow at 4 p.m. That's every Sabbath at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Um, reach out if you want to join, and I'll give you the link. The only way you're gonna be able to join is if you got the link. Um, we ain't uh we ain't making it public no more. We had some weirdos join before. All right, let's pray out.